shame, shame, shame. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. You know, it's funny as that thing is running, I'm thinking, well, that probably applies to everything or a lot of things. So you don't know where I'm going tonight, do you? Uh, on a local level, we've got a fissure in the State Democratic Party of significance. The Women's Caucus has been looking for some autonomy within the Democratic State Party operations and political uh, um, processes and all of that, and they've come up empty. The Democratic establishment wants one voice. You know, the big tent has to be small when it comes to speaking and fundraising and those matters. And the Women's Caucus, donned in white this week, said, mm-mm. And while they expressed their discontent, they've now recently decided, and perhaps this was already baked into their protest cake, that if they did not get what they wanted was the autonomy they were looking for, they were going to do it anyway. Um, I don't think there's like a law that says they can't. So it's a fascinating conversation. And it reminds me that here in Rhode Island, for those of you who complain that you know, the Democrats are in control and somewhat monolithic, that is not the case. Never has been. Uh, perhaps now, never will be. Greetings, great to have you in. Thanks for tuning in to the Dan York Show. We have the chair of that Women's Caucus uh, coming up momentarily. In the meantime, there's this little thing going on in Washington, and this was not a good day for the President of the United States. It was not a good day for the Republicans. Headline here on Ambassador Gordon Sunland, who uh, is perhaps the looser-lipped and more casual of all the witnesses, and it's a dictate uh, or I, I think a reflection on his style and a dictate to the Republican Party that they don't really know what to do with this guy. And I can't believe, based on his former testimony, at least hints about what he was going to say, even though there's some story adjustment going here, that they were caught as flat-footed as they were this morning. Uh, as you know, we record the program early in the afternoon amidst that which is going on right now, but here's what the network had at press time for us. President Trump's hand-picked ambassador to the European Union, Gordon Sondland, says he was following the president's orders when he worked with Rudy Giuliani on Ukraine matters. Was there a quid pro quo? As I testified previously, with regard to the requested White House call and the White House meeting, the answer is yes. Sondland testified Giuliani, the president's personal attorney, was demanding Ukraine make a public statement announcing political investigations. Sondland said top officials, including Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, were in the loop. Even as late as September 24th of this year, Secretary Pompeo was directing Kurt Volker to speak with Mr. Giuliani. Sondland has already had to go back and change his closed-door testimony after his original reports were disputed by so many witnesses. He blames the inconsistencies on the State Department and White House not giving him access to phone records and other documents. In the absence of these materials, my memory admittedly has not been perfect. Democrats had a warning for President Trump and Pompeo for withholding the documents. They do so at their own peril. Republicans say this is the latest in a long line of false charges. The Democrats have exploited the Intelligence Committee for political purposes for three years, culminating in these impeachment hearings and their mania to attack the president. In a statement Thursday, the White House said the entire premise of Democrats' quid pro quo has been debunked. Aid was released and Ukraine never took any action. Two more witnesses testify later today. Anybody who watched the hearings knows this is a big, 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 big problem. And I just caught some audio uh, sent over to me from the radio. You know, two shows a day, you got to be shaking and baking. Uh, I didn't catch this before we got on the air today. Most of you have probably seen the president uh, in front of the helicopter again, screaming uh, his reflection to Sunland, which is that his response to Sunland when Sunland reportedly, according to him, asked, what the do you want from Ukraine? He said, I want nothing, uh, but have Zelensky, you know, make a statement, of, you know, make a, a press statement about 2016 Ukrainian involvement 
and Burisma, which is, parentheses, Biden, uh, his animation, I'm just listening to the audio right now, his animation that I'm sure you have seen, uh, and I will see later, uh, later from now, but before you've seen this, do you get that? Uh, is, is an indication that um, he is caught in the corner here. And guess who's going down? Rudy Giuliani. No doubt about that. Giuliani has been uh, scouring Ukraine with business interests. He's already got a couple of uh, associates who are jammed up on indictment. Uh, it is clear that this is all pointing to the president's discharge of whatever happens in Ukraine to Rudy Giuliani, who's been very quiet in the last month, has counsel, and who is uh, getting ready to be thrown under the bus. It's being warmed up as we speak. Uh, how that all turns out, we'll see. Uh, we'll be all impeachment on the next two programs with, uh, with some guesting uh, tomorrow night and Friday night. In the meantime, let's come home and talk about this very interesting political conversation. I will tell you, if we don't have impeachment hearings going on, this would be like big, big news around here. Um, let's follow the travel. Here's the first headline that kind of caught our attention. Uh, the caucus is, is looking to, you know, find its way and is debating some of the processes of the Republican Party. And then... Today, we see a front page headline that says, all right, we're taking our ball and bat, and we're, I don't know if we're going home, but we're going our own way. Here was some of the flavor, according to Kathy Gregg, Providence Journal reporter's, you know, iPhone video last night. Shame, 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 Shame. Liz, welcome. Thank you for having me. You are a former town councilor in South Kingstown. That's correct. And um, you are now running this caucus. Yes. We'll talk about how it works and where you're going. But what is shameful? The way the Democratic Party handled the, the bylaws that they presented on Monday night, um, the whole process was embarrassing for the party, um, embarrassing for the state committee. Um, the Women's Caucus had asked to be represented on that bylaws committee in a formal capacity um, so that we could be part of the process. I mean, one seat out of ten people on a committee. And they told us no. And then they told us what the rules were going to be without discussion. Why did they tell you no? I don't know. It's a great question. I, I well, that must have come up in some of the discourse, no? Uh, not really. I mean, I can only guess that they're afraid of us. I mean, we bring nothing but strength to the party. We've organized. There's 600 people in our caucus, uh, women that are energized and ready to go. And in politics, uh, you keep your enemies closer than your friends. Not that you'd be an enemy, but certainly if they're afraid of you, I think it probably rolls into the same category, which is if you're afraid of people, keep them closer to you. The idea that you don't include, uh, you know, formal women's caucus appointment to a 10-member committee seems to be insane. Well, actually, there's no representation on the 220-person state committee for the women's caucus either. So, well, what is the remind me because uh, sometimes I get confused between the two parties and how they do business. Sure. Uh, appointment to the ten-member executive committee of, of the Democrats requires what? A nomination? Is it a vote? What happens? Uh, that would ha happen by vote for the state committee. But what I was talking about with the ten-person committee was the bylaws committee. The bylaws. It was just a subcommittee that was designed. You to were look looking over for the one of ten on a subcommittee. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's all you wanted? Yes, and we asked several In totality times. for everything that you're doing? Seems to me you've got a larger agenda than that. Uh, no, that was exactly what we wanted. We wanted to be part of the discussion about how they were rewriting the rules and how it would affect the caucuses. But I thought you wanted uh, fundraising, uh, autonomy. You wanted to be able to speak autonomously. Yeah. And that seems to me to be past just um, protocols and bylaws. Well, we were doing all those things anyways, and we didn't know that they were writing rules to prohibit us from doing that. Um, if we had been part of the conversation, we could have figured out why they wanted to do that and why it would they were so fearful of us and having us involved in the process. I really think it's fear. That's the only thing I can think of. I mean, why would you not want your you most engaged caucus? You seem like a very caucus? pleasant person. Why would I be afraid of you? Why would they be afraid of you? Well, I, there are people who are elected that are Democrats in Rhode Island that are not really upholding the tenets of the Democratic platform. And we saw that with the Reproductive Health Care Act uh, last year when we saw um, legislators that voted against it, that actively worked against it, Democrats. And women aren't going to stand for things like that. So I think it can be threatening to know that we don't align with those people. Okay, when we come back, we'll talk about whether it's gender or ideology or a little combination of both. Stay with us. Shame! 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 
So you uh, you see the tone of uh, that 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 response by your group at the Democratic uh, State Committee meeting this week. I'm guessing it was at the end. Um, actually, it was right about the middle. Um, I mean, I think the tone was set for that meeting at the beginning when um, the chair of the state committee said, "This isn't the Jerry Springer show." He expected everybody to behave. Joe Mack said that. Yes. My goodness. No. By the way, we're going to invite the uh, the chairman in here for conversation. I just want to kind of establish some of your thoughts before we did that. Sure. Uh, I'm guessing you chaired the day as here too with him about uh, about the issues that you have. I'm sorry. I'm guessing that you'd share the same space oh, with them. Oh, of course here. I would. Yeah. We have always invited the party to collaborate and work together, and we have never been taken up on that offer. Now that's listen. I got to tell you something. You you are you are a um, you're you're not a dramatic speaker, but that's a substantial tone that you just took there. That's we the truth. have always invited the party. You can see, I can see, old guard mm. hearing that, thinking, uh. Who do you think you are mm. suggesting that you welcome the party? Mm -hmm. This party has been here forever. This political establishment has done great things for Rhode Island. You'll invite us. Yeah. Well, we've come So to you probably have some tone issues to work over with them. And I'm certainly not doing their business yeah, no, or I their bidding. I don't think democracy is a tone. I mean, we have looked for ourselves represented in the state party for many years, and we have not had a state party that supported us. And we've had to show up in our own way. You know, we formed our own caucus because we were so disgusted with how things were going. So who's we? Who's we? I, I, I said at the, at the break, is it gender or is it ideology? Well, who is we? Women who support the tenets of the democratic platform. I mean, we support reproductive justice. We want women to have equal pay. We want to see the doula bill pass session. We. We want things for women in Rhode Island, and it's a shame that we can't find that within our own party. By the way, the, the doula bill probably went, people went, what the, the what? The, the doula thing is a fascinating concept. I have a great friend who is a doula who um, does incredible work for, for women, uh, especially with uh, women who, who are challenged with postpartum because they need some time to reorient, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's a fascinating service and something that if you can afford it, um, is a big bonus once the baby arrives. Uh, and, and that's about equality too. We see uh, women of color that are uh, dying at disproportionately high rates um, in Rhode Island in, during childbirth. So, But you know, I, I harken back, God uh, rest my mother's soul, she was a staunch Democrat. Mm. Uh, but she was very pro-life. Mm -hmm. where, well, where, where, where's that left in, in, in the Democratic Party? Is there no space left for that position? I'm not sure you can call yourself a Democrat if one of the main principles is reproductive justice. I think that you don't have to have an abortion. You don't have to uh, befriend women that do, but um, it's about bodily autonomy and it's about a woman's ability to make a choice about her own health with her doctor. And I don't think that government really has a, a place there. Does the, uh, like, well, since we're in it, let's talk about it. The, 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 the abortion issue uh, is front and center again. Uh, and of course, the Keystone Cop Republican Party decides that they're going to put out signs for donations, anybody but, anybody but, for both the Senate President and the Speaker of the House, mm. which is the dumbest thing I've seen in a long time because all you have to do is be a pro choice candidate who's not Nick Mediello or, mm -hmm. or Ruggiero, and they're just so dumb. Um, it must not feel like a fair fight sometimes on the debate, even though the issue itself is is, is one of faith and and heart feelings, hard feelings for people. Mm -hmm. um, you mad at Mattiello and Ruggiero for voting no? They let the bill through. Yeah, I'm pleased that they did. I don't think that it would have been as difficult as it was um, if they'd been supportive. And I mean, they're if they're true blue Democrats, they should say, you know, I don't expect them to get an abortion, and I don't expect them to ask their their well, wives or be, family that, to. That would be clinically impossible. Of right? course, yeah. but I would never pressure them to hold those ideals. But I do expect them to respect autonomy and a woman's choice ability to make her own choices. Well, I, I think I think the force of your argument and many others caused them to do something which is ironic in some ways vis-a-vis uh, -vis their leadership style because if the speaker and the center president don't like something it never finds the floor mm -hmm. yes. it found the floor right they voted against it individually but it found the floor and won the day yeah. uh, i don't know why you can't s uh, well I, I don't want to characterize your, your full concept on this but uh, 
if I were an establishment Democrat, I'd be looking at you saying, uh, Liz, give them a break. Mm. They, they, they threaded the needle in a way that they don't usually do. Sure, and I'm grateful that they, those bills came to the floor despite their convictions. Um, but we know in Rhode Island that the Speaker of the House is the most powerful person in the state and that no bills get to the floor unless he says that they do. And I just don't think that that's a system that's democratic. And um, I can still be grateful. That's not a democratic principle. That's a good government principle. Mm, I just you, would share, you would share a lot of common ground with Republicans who, when they come up with good ideas from time to time, never see the light of day mm -hmm. until it's passed to a Democrat to sponsor. Wow. Uh, and I wonder if I, well, and we've talked about this, by the way, on the progressive movement side, gender excluded, that there is more, I don't know, process common ground between the Republicans and the progressive Democrats mm -hmm. because they feel like they can't get their word in edgewise. Yeah. Do you agree? I do. And we've even seen some support, some support from the other side of the aisle um, during this caucus sort of chaos that we've had where people have said we get it we know what it's like to be disenfranchised and to be ignored and I can appreciate that you know we might not agree on some of the principles of uh, our platform parties but I think we can all agree in process and w when it's not fair it needs to be called out all right so I don't know what to do now see because when we want the democratic response do I have to make a whole bunch of phone calls we'll be right back to talk about it So the, the Women's Caucus, a uh, formal name, that it would be what, the Democratic Women's Caucus? Uh, there's the Rhode Island Democratic Party Women's Caucus, and there is the Rhode Island Democratic Women's Caucus oh, now. For goodness sake. Which is, who are you? I'm the chair of both of them. Were you like multiple email addresses or something? Yeah. Or what, 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 why? The, well, the under, Democratic Party? Or what, 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 huh? Sure. So we went to our membership uh, last week. We had a general caucus meeting, and we said, you know, these bylaws are coming, what, how do you want to handle this? What do you want to do? Um, and all the women in the room uh, overwhelmingly agreed that they want to keep doing the things that we're doing, electing women, endorsing them, financially supporting them, and we can't do that under the new bylaws. So we found a mechanism and a way to channel that energy into a new group that can do all those things and without the party restrictions. Oh, I get it. So on a formal basis, in terms of how you raise money, and how you spend money, mm -hmm. you formed an outside entity. Correct. Because you can't rec you can't call yourself Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. You'd have litigation with the party if, if if you started acting on behalf of them. Correct. I see. I get it now. Ding. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, it's the very thing that Joe McNamara, who we have a, we have a video of Joe, um, the the chairman, uh, longtime chairman, and state representative. It's the it's his nightmare, mm -hmm. by the way. Yeah. So, how active are you going to be? Uh, in terms of day-to-day -day issues that come up in the state, are you going to be putting out a press release on most everything? Are you going to form your entity so that it's identifiable, not just for, for lack of a better term, the big stuff, mm -hmm. but just forming a, a relationship with media and the citizens of this state on a pedestrian level? Yeah, I mean, we the night of the uh, state committee meeting, we had our new branding out. We had changed all of our social media handles, our email addresses. Um, we were, were ready to hit the ground is running. It, is it close to a formation of a new party? No, absolutely not. It's still Democratic women, and we still have Democratic principles. Uh, it just isn't under the big party tent that we don't seem to be welcome under. Progressive movement in this state um, is getting traction. Help me with definitions going forward. Mm -hmm. Democratic Women's Caucus defined as a progressive political movement? There are progressive members in our group. Um, I think some people would like to say that we're this fringe group of women um, that have these extremely progressive views and maybe the loudest voices in the room get a lot of attention. And those are our, some of our progressive members. But we are a group of women that is very diverse. There are over 600 members. Um, diverse on what? Their, your backgrounds or your beliefs? Our beliefs across all of the democratic um, spectrum. So what if there's a pro-life woman who believes that uh, that women just aren't, uh, don't have enough footing in politics in general? Uh, are they welcome in your group? Well, they're welcome to come express their opinions. I haven't had that happen yet, um, but we would welcome anybody who disagrees with I'm us. I'm not just picking on the abortion it. issue. I'm just sure. trying to think off the top of my head. You know, what if 
I've had some women reach out to me and say that they're uncomfortable with forming a new group, um, and we have a conversation about it. And I think that's the difference between us and. But are they in? Yes. They're they're uncomfortable, but they're in. They're in because they we are accessible to have a conversation. Uh, do you, will you say things about things like the IGT Twin River controversy, for uh, for example? Um, that hasn't really been identified as one of our priorities uh, going into. It's the biggest taxpayer worry we have right now. It's worth a billion dollars. Right. Are you going to are you guys going to step up on those kind of matters, or are you just going to like I asked before? Or pick and choose and not be a pedestrian place to go for perspective? Well, we have a legislative committee that's going to sort of outline our priorities heading into 2020. Um, I'm going to wait for the feedback from our caucus members to find out where they want to go and what they want to support. Do you worry sometimes that the idea that uh, we want to elect women, we're there to elect women, we're there to elect women, um, puts gender in front of even ability? Uh, no, I don't think so at all. I think we're in any given race. If you're looking at a district and you go, "Well, boy, we have a we have a smart guy in that race, Democrat." Mm -hmm. but we also have this woman who's kind of not really on our game. What happens? Well, we are the Women's Caucus and we support women. And I would reach out to that candidate that's a female that might not be on her game and find out how I can get her on her. Don't game. you feel that that's don't you put yourself in a box, sort of? No, absolutely not. I, and women are constantly underrepresented in many places across a myriad of place of spectrum uh, in the Democratic Party and just in workplaces. Is, and it, is, it, is there a chance that that might be almost anti-feminist in the sense that any woman, no matter who she is and her, versus her capability, would, would win the day over a man running? Well, I don't think I said that. Um, well, I think almost every is, in my example, you kind of point to it and say, listen, we try to, we try to educate her up. Uh, I think every woman deserves to be supported, and I think there's not a lot of places for women to find that support, and that's what we hope to be for them. Unconditionally? Yes, absolutely. Women deserve to be lifted up. The best candidate will win in an election, and it's generally up to your constituents who they want representing them. And I hope that it's the woman, and I hope that she's the better candidate. Sometimes she'll win, sometimes she won't. Resolvable with the state Democratic Party to calm this thing down and to fold in, yes or no? Yes, absolutely. Uh, You'd if fold the caucus if... Oh, I wouldn't fold our caucus, no. Our members Or the, the formal other entity that's going to fundraise and do all that kind of stuff. No, I think that's here to stay. Uh, their new bylaws that they adopted would prohibit us from doing all the things that we're doing in that new entity. Well, what if they readjusted their bylaws? I think that... I mean, I, listen, if I'm Joe McNamara, Joe, and, then I'm, and I'm watching the show, I'm going, can we reconvene the bylaw committee and see if we can calm this sucker down? That's what we've been asking for since the beginning. If they do, would you fold the other formal fundraising entity? I would wait until that conversation happens to decide what to but do. But you're open to that. Of course I am. Look I at me negotiating <laughs> the, benef the, the, the goodwill of the Democratic Party. Um, thanks for your accessibility and coming to talk to me oh, about happy it. happy to do it. And thanks I for having that, me. And I hope that we shall come Great. on agreement and on battles, because they're more fun, don't you think? <laughs> Definitely sort of, exciting. Sort of. All right. Wow. Controversy. Uh, final word when we come back. All right. Uh, really interesting stuff within the Democratic Party here in the Rhode Island. You know, if we didn't have all this impeachment stuff going on, this would be very hot news and a very hot discussion and a worthwhile one, I think. Uh, so we'll keep in touch with that. And hopefully the chair of the state Democratic Party arrives here next week to talk about it. And if I were him, I might be rethinking the bylaw committee representation. Uh, help me help you, Joe. We'll see you tomorrow night and on the radio at 3 until 6 on WPRL. Good night.